Hello, and today I'm going to talk to you about the endogenous theory of money. So essentially, the endogenous theory of money is the notion that money grows from within internally the real economy. As the name suggests, endogenously money grows from within the economy. So how is credit created in um, in the economy? Well, essentially what happens is, is that banks will look at the activity uh, that's been going on internally and they will give out loans on the basis of the activity they will make that decision and then to fund these loans they turn to the central bank who provide the um, deposits and they do this via setting interest rates so that's how it works now the two key characteristics of the endogenous theory of money is that a endogenous um, money is always backed up by productive assets because if banks are giving out loans on the basis of the real economy they're saying okay well this money uh, is going to be needed for consumption this is going to be needed for uh, investment money is always backed up by a productive asset it's not just on the basis that I have these reserves so I'm just going to give out this amount of money as it would be in the exogenous model the second key characteristic is that loans money is lent out um, out of not nothing essentially is what it's called because you're giving out the loans you're saying that this is the right thing to do you're looking at the endogenous demand of full money and then after that you're relying on the central bank to provide funds via, via saying overnight interest rates um, so that's how you create money that's how money is created and every agent in the endogenous theory of money has a potential to create money and the, how they can do that is via money demand and as we'll see because this is a post Keynesian theory the three Keynesian demands of money still exist here so how is this different from the neoclassicalism exogenous theory of money? Essentially, in the neoclassical theory of money, money is neutral and it doesn't really have much value. It doesn't have these three uh, ways of being demanded for as Keynes set out. What they basically say is that deposits, um, they determine how much money is given out. As opposed to in the endogenous, you say, okay, this is how much um loans are needed this will de uh, uh, this determines how much deposits we have uh, coming in how much reserves we get from the central bank so what happens in the neoclassical model is deposits come in x amount of money from those deposits is lent in and through um bookkeeping and various calculations such that you'll see in the fractional um, reserve system money is multiplied and credit is created so what is the historical background to the endogenous theory of money? Well, as I mentioned, it's a post-Keynesian theory, which was heavily influ uh, influenced by the works of Marx, particularly when we see um, the importance of fiscal policy within this theory. So what are the three um, uh, functions of money I keep referring back to? Well, the first is, is that money is demanded because it is a unit of account, i.e. what that means, it's a measure of ma value. We demand money because we want to be able to measure how much this pen is worth in comparison to this phone or something like that. The second reason why money is demanded is demanded as a means of payment, so linking directly to consumption. We demand money in order to buy a house, to buy a phone, to consume, to invest, to expend, basically. And the third uh, way in which money is demanded, now this is significantly dis uh, different from the neoclassical model, is that... Um, money is seen as a store of value. It's an asset in itself. People want it just because they want it. And Keynes was very interested in the idea of people hoarding money, speculating. And so he, um, this is sometimes referred to as the fetish for liquidity when people hoard money. And he says this is the key, key reason what we need to directly control because this is what causes unemployment. Because what happens is if people are hoarding money, then interest rates go up and this means that significant uh, money for productive investment uh, cannot be found and therefore unemployment just increases. And following this, the developments in the endogenous theory of money are also with Basil Moore and his work on horizontalist and verticalist. And he says the same thing, that essentially you can't control uh, money because it's endogenous and each agent has this potential. And this is why mainstream economics is uh, incorrect and false. The Radcliffe Report in 1959 was drawing on the same lines. However, that was more of a critique of the mainstream view. That was providing, um, I think, two key reasons why um, 
the whole idea of money aggregates it just didn't work for the economy and the idea of controlling money uh, aggregates um uh, stems out of the exogenous theory of money that if um the only person who can create the money is banks because they use the money multiplier then they can also control how much um money is present which they fail to do um as we'll see so what are the evidence and the justifications given um for the endogenous theory of money so the first is in real life in modern banking we see that first money is given out loans are given out then do deposits to um uh to cover this uh loans um come or do uh, funds from the central banks come and sometimes this happens many months later first is given out so this is in line with endogenous money uh, theory of money that people are not just looking at their books and saying okay we're going to give out they're responding to the real economy they're responding to money demand and um, the second reason is in the 1980s when inflation was really high and following this exogenous theory of money money um uh, uh monetary aggregate targets was pursued as a policy now it did tame inflation yep it did that but it failed to contain money supply and unemployment went extremely high so overall it wasn't a good policy and it did not work and this is sometimes this negative um period of economics is sometimes seen as justification for the endogenous theory of money the third reason is that the connection between private debt and growth. So evidence suggests that you increase private debt, you're basically increasing investment consumption, all the factors of aggregate demand. And so you're increasing aggregate demand and you're increasing um, growth. Whereas in the exogenous money, this causality, this evidence is not explained because if banks are just intermediaries, they're not um, necessarily pursuing growth by saying, okay, we should lend out money, we should invest. Whereas this is wrong, because as we saw pre the 2008 uh, recession, that, um, you know, credit cards and all these different sources of credit were becoming extremely important because that was what was sparing growth, that was what was pushing it. And the endogenous money of theory, uh, the endogenous theory of money shows this and it explains this causality it says because banks see that this much money is demanded so we're going to give out this much and this is what usually causes growth and eventually this growth will pay itself back or central bank gives um money and this is how credit creation takes place and um the fourth one is this idea of altering the money base, which again ties into the exogenous theory of money, the Thatcher period in the 80s was like, let's target money aggregates. But if that is the case, then essentially you're saying that if you increase um, your money base, banks automatically increase the amount of money they give out, right? Because banks base their lending decisions on the amount they get in. So what happened when Ben Bernanke did the quantitative um, easing and these several rounds? You're putting more money, you're pumping more money uh, into banks. But we didn't see an increase in lending. So clearly something else, clearly the endogenous theory might be right because um, it's saying actually banks are only responding to the demand to, to what's happening in the economy. So they're not going to respond just by you pumping money. It's got to be more than that. So how can we link this endogenous theory to um, the recent recession? So what do the endogenous theory of money uh, supporters say? Well, they're saying that when demand is low in the private sector, each agent is not going to be uh, creating money. So money, uh, uh, money creation endogenously will be at all time low. So it's the role of the government by using fiscal policy to really um, change this and create all the economic agents into money multiplying um, agents again. And furthermore, central banks, um, they don't use open uh, market operations to borrow from the public because why would a sovereign issue of money need to borrow from the public? Use open market operations... <coughs> to as an interest rate mechanism they want to stop um, interest rates from e reaching an all-time low um, and so that's why open market operations central banks would need to start using because you need interest rates not to be too too low so the caveat to this 
part of their response to the recession, I'll add, is that this becomes extremely difficult when you're faced with mega, mega amounts of national debt. How can you justify spending more when debts are so high? Because even if the automatic stabilizer and we get growth again, your debt would have increased even more and you would be in further trouble. So that's the kind of dichotomy that we're in right now. Thank you for watching.